Hello and welcome to our live workshop about Agile task management made simple with MeisterTask. I'm going to show you today how you can actually use MeisterTask to set up a collaborative project board that you can share with your clients and stakeholders. Also how to manage Agile projects with sections, section actions and also the ability to assign tasks and deadlines. We will also cover how to welcome feedback from clients and stakeholders at each and every iteration of your Agile process. We will use the task commenting features, watching features and many other features. We will also take a look on how to use integrations and features specific to software project management to integrate with Zendesk, Harvest and Freshdesk. We will also take a look on how to quickly onboard team members regardless of their technical abilities. So I will just start right away with taking a look at Meister Task and also cover our first part on how to set up a collaborative project board. So I will just quickly show my screen here with you so you can see Meister Task right away on the screen as well. And you should already be able to see Meister Task here. I will make the screen bigger as well for you here. And now everything should be good to go. So we are now logged into Meister Task um, actually via our macOS application. You can use any modern web browser or, or Windows application or even use it on your mobile phone or tablet. Now I'm here on the dashboard and it's basically the first screen of MeisterTask. Now we want to set up a collaborative project board and also share it with our clients and stakeholders. So to do that, we will just simply go to the left bottom of the dashboard here and add a new project. And the new project would be maybe called Agile Software Sprint. I can add a description right away, which is probably also helpful if you invite other people to the project. And I will add here, here, we will list our latest software sprint and invite all clients and stakeholders. The software sprint will always be up to date. So that is a little description. And now I can go ahead and invite other people to this project right away before even creating the project. And I can either do that by uh, using the pre-selected ones here that already worked with me in the past, but I can of course also just add a new email right away here and add this fourth person as well. Now, the last step is obviously to click on create project. I'm doing that. I automatically invited everybody to this project. And as you can see here in my project list on the left side, there's already this new project. And now the first thing to do is to just click on it to jump into it. Now the project is still empty. We invited a couple of people to it, but of course we don't have any tasks in there. So what we want to do now is we want to use the different sections to set up an agile project. And we already named them per default for Meister Task in Open, in Progress, and Done. So that's a basic principle for Kanban here, but we might want to change them as well. So we could just go in and instead of up, if Open, we call it Upcoming. And we might also add an In Review lane for later and color it a little bit differently so that we can see that in one glance in, in our project board. Now we would start adding new features to this Agile project board here in the first lane. So an upcoming um, feature here, for example, for a software sprint would be add ability to use AR in Meister task. We can add a description to it. Use Meister task on your office, this wall to present tasks via AR. So there would be one feature in here and we probably also want to assign it right away. Um, we won't do that right now because we will cover how to assign tasks a little later as well. Now what we usually would happen, we would have a couple of upcoming tasks in here. So another one would be to really quickly add this here, um, add offline functionality 
Burmeister task. And another one could be in here to actually not a feature, but more of a bug. Add different roles to each project. So we have three tasks right now here in this sprint, in this upcoming lane here. Let's just create another one here. Let's try to get up to five tasks here. Um, another one would be dragging and dropping images on tasks. Doesn't work in Internet Explorer 10. And another one here would be probably to also add videos in inline view to tasks. So we have a couple of features here, um, one bug here in, in our Agile software sprint. And now we can actually really use the different sections here to, to show what's in progress, what's in review and so on. And to actually use the different sections, we can just take the task and drag and drop it to the next section. It's really similar to, to your wall in the office where you could use post-its to move the different um, the different tasks to different lanes and that's also what we um, covered in in our white paper of it is one example um, of this one company but we do pretty much exactly the same online where you have where everybody has access to the different tasks wherever they are they don't need to be in front of the same office wall of course they can be on a plane right on a train in another office so this of course simplifies a lot the one thing that uh, the company pointed out in the white paper was that they use physical space on their wall to limit their tasks in the different sections of the sprint. And of course, if you just have a virtual wall here, you could basically add as much tasks as you want to a project. And then the developers will be unhappy, your customer, your clients will be unhappy because you're not able to deliver anything. So what we decided to, to use internally here is to actually define a count for the different sections here. So for the upcoming one, we would probably try to keep it up with maximum of 10 features here. And in progress, we know we have five developers, so we could add five here. In the in-review, it doesn't really matter, but let's also set a limit for five and the done is obviously great if it's done. <laughs> so we won't limit anything here. Now, this count up here that you defined with your team or you as a scrum master in your project really helps to, to compare the existing count here that you will always see in the task section to your maximum count here. And this way, when, you, when we later share this project with our client, with our stakeholders, um, and also encourage them, of course, to give feedback during the process, they can always see, okay, there's no more space, for example, for adding upcoming features if there are already 10 in here. So we have to contact them directly and work out something else or drop another feature if the new feature is more important. So this is a great way to still limit the different sections, the different sprint sections here, by just adding this count to the section title here because you can always see and compare the actual count of the section and the maximum count that you defined with your team or use a Scrum Master. Now, um, another thing to using these sections is of course we would move them into different lanes. Now, if they're in progress, people would also assign them to themselves. Of course, we, we have to know who is actually working on this feature or if I'm the project leader here, I could also assign the tasks right away. And for this in progress, um, to actually assign somebody, I can simply click on this question mark icon here and select somebody. So for this one, we want to use Susan. For the add different roles, we want to add Mario. And now we also have accountability on those tasks. Now we can easily see at one glance, okay, this, this task is assigned to Susan here. This one is assigned to Mario. Now, if I add a new task here to the in-progress lane, and I know I have five developers working on the software sprint, I can just see already, okay, those two are already working on those two things, and they, they both actually seem to be quite complicated to add. So I will just assign this additional task to John here, and maybe the next one, the fourth one that's in progress in my current sprint here to myself, to Oliver here. So 
that's a great way to see in in one glance who is responsible for what, who's working on what, um, and to really see and check back with the different uh, developers while still having a bird's eye view. That's also so important on those sprint meetings um, that you usually would have as a scrum master or as a project leader with your team members to check back what's really going on, what's in progress, what's nearly to in review or finish or to, to the completion. And this way you can plan accordingly for your all new upcoming features. Because right now here, if we really finish these features, we can fill up our pipeline here or upcoming um, with new features, new bugs, and use them in the next sprint, in the next sprint meeting where we would actually go through the different tasks, move them to the different sections again. Um, review them after they are completed um, by our developers and then after we have reviewed them be it a code review uh, by one of our senior developers or be it some something else somebody else that takes a look over like a client here or a stakeholder we would eventually move the task into the done lane here now we did this with all our four tasks here but it was of course a lot of uh, manual work involved here and we just had to manually move the stuff around. So one thing that I want to point out here is our sections, a section actions on, on Meister Task, our workflow automations, and those can really help you with the different sections. So let's just move um, the couple of tasks here back. I can select multiple tasks by holding the command or control key, command on Mac OS, control on Windows to select a couple of tasks at the same time and move them also around. And now I want to show you our section actions here. So in each and every section that we have here, so we have upcoming, in progress, in review and done, we have different actions that we can define. So as soon as we open the section menu here to the right of the section name, we can switch to this action tabs. On the first tab, as we did before, you could change the appearance of the section, like changing the color and the icon, even add a description to the section, if you want to make sure that everybody's in the same same line here um, when it comes to the different use of the sections. But the second part here, the actions, are the really great magic behind Meister Task here. Because in those sections, you can really define what's happening when a task is moved here or created here. And let's just look into the actions here and see if we can use something in here. So for example, for the Agile Software Sprint. We, um, uh, this Software Sprint would be for a new marketing campaign where we have a lot of automation included. So what should actually happen for the in review is that our client, in this case, the client of our development team is our marketing department. So what we want to do is we want to notify the marketing department, of course, that something happened here, that, that, that the stuff is actually in review for them. So for example, the add videos in inline view to tasks is something that we want to write a blog post about, that we want to tweet about, that we want to use um, in, in social media. So it's really important that our marketing department gets an update about it and also reviews it before it's released. So what we will do here in our actions is we will add an action to actually send a Slack message to a specific channel. And that's just one of the many actions that we have here. And I will just click here on the send a Slack message. I will quickly configure Slack here um, on my on my computer, I will just authorize real quick um, at the back here. You will just see that in a second again. Authorize with my Slack account here to make sure that the that the tasks and everything get pushed to the to the correct Slack channel here. Quickly do that. Should be already brought back to to my task right now. It's authorizing, moving back now. And now actually I can in Slack choose the specific channel that I want to use. And now I, I choose the marketing channel here. Uh, I want to add the different um, Slack parts here. And if we now go in back here again, send a Slack message, it will automatically load all my Slack channels here because I authenticated at the back in my browser. And now I can actually choose the marketing channel here. Choose this one. And now as soon as a task is moved or created here, we will send a Slack message to the marketing channel. So let's take again the example for the adding videos in inline view to tasks. I will move it here to the in review lane and the Slack message will be automatically sent. And to show you how this really looks 
Also in Slack, I will just simply change my screen to our Slack. So you should be able to see um, my Slack opened here right now. And as you can see here today, this is just a new message that just came in. Um, we had John Demo, our demo user here, added a task to section in review of Project Agile Software Sprint. So now it's not only a static uh, link to this task. I can, of course, click, click on it, but I can also right away, if after I looked at the task, move it to the next section. I can move it to the section done if it's really done right out of slack without ever moving into master task i was still in my slack channel i can see who actually moved the task to a section done and if we now move back again with the screen sharing to our master task app you will immediately see that the task was actually really moved to the done lane you can see it here it was moved in here now what we would usually do for the done lane is also using another section action. And actually for the done lane, it makes the most sense to add an action to also change the status of a task. Because we don't want to go in there again and manually complete it, we want to complete it automatically. And now as we already have this one task in, I can also run this action on all existing tasks in this section. Click on done and everything is automatically checked off. Now the next thing would work of course with the next task here. If I now go back quickly to, to Slack and move it to another section, you can see right away in Meister task how this works, how this gets transported to the done lane. Yep, uh, already, wow, it's really blazingly fast. Mm -hmm. And it's already in the done lane and it's already completed. So that's one action, or actually two actions that we now saw in Meister task to support your sprint, to support your sprint planning, and also to to include external people in here. Now, one thing that I promised you to show as well is not only to use how to use section actions and to assign tasks, but also to assign deadlines. And the deadlines will be an important factor a little bit later as well uh, when we go into more reportings and more of the bird's eye view for your project. So let's take the example again of our in-progress. We want to add the different roles to each project by, let's say, the end of September basically the 29th, not the 30th. We don't work on Saturdays, at least not the development department. So we added this due date here and the ability to use AR in Meister task would be of course great already next week. So we added two due dates to this task. Now what happens um, with due date as soon as we set a due date, this task will also be um, shown in a more prominent way to the assigned user. So we have this task here assigned to Susan, this one assigned to Mario. So if I now take a task for myself, again here, let's say the dragging and dropping images on tasks, because it's a bug, it's critical, I should resolve it really soon, so I will assign it to myself here. It's in progress, that's true. And I can also edit due date to really fix this, actually tomorrow, ideally today. Let's set it for today. So now that I set it for today, today the task is of course due today and as soon as something happens like this as soon as the task is due on the same day already overdue the task is automatically marked in a yellow orange way here so that you can see at one glance which tasks are really important where do i have to act in my in my agile software sprint um, which tasks do we have to work on first especially if you have different due dates in the upcoming lane then you can really see and also sort this section here via the due date again to actually see okay what's the priority which task do i have to move first to the in progress which task do i have or which bugs do i have to work on first and as soon as i mentioned before as soon as a due date is set to a user um, and the task is assigned to somebody this will show up for the user as well it's not only showing up via email, via an email notification, it's also showing up on the dashboard of the user. So if we go to our all tasks in here, we can see that today actually we have to work on dragging and dropping images on tasks um, because it doesn't work in Internet Explorer 10. So it's always on top of your dashboard as well. Of course, there are a couple of other already overdue tasks. That's why that's only the fifth task in the list. 
but usually you shouldn't have so many overdue tasks as our demo user here. So usually that's always the top of your list here. Um, if you, and that's of course the ideal way of working, if you don't um, let your task getting overdue, then you can still scroll down here and use the all my tasks lane here and sort them by due date as well. Because as you can see here, there's automatically all my tasks are automatically coming up here as well. Uh, they are assigned to me here and I can see, okay, this is actually due tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, September 28th and so on and so on. So this is a great way of working through your tasks if you're working in different sprints or multiple projects. But let's just simply jump back to our Agile software sprint here to show you a little bit more also of our deadlines and section actions. Now for the section in review, we used um, and applied already the action for sending a Slack message to marketing. Now one additional thing that you might want to use in your software sprint if you're working for a client is also time tracking. And time tracking is something that can be enabled or disabled for your whole project in a global setting. So if you are on your project, project settings up here, you can manage them, go into the features up here and enable time tracking for the whole project. Now as soon as you did this, you will see a time tracking slot on each and every task here at the top right side of your task dialog. You can now start time recording here, stop time recording, export the time slips, bill your customers uh, after exporting it in your favorite billing solution. It's a really great way if you have to uh, actually track time or, or bill hours um, from your different development team members to actually um, calculate your, your end invoice for your customer to to also see where are you in your budget to, to really see how many hours you already worked on this project and what the status is also for for a call with your customer so one thing that i also want to show up show show here is how to use the time tracking in our section actions because usually if i move a task into in progress lane it should also start time tracking if i have to track time so what I can do here is I can add an action as well to start the time tracking of the task. And I will just simply enable this here. Now, of course, um, if I go into each and every task here, it's not automatically enabled because they're already in there. But as soon as I just move them back real quick here and move them back in, or let's just move one in here, the really important one, the dragging and dropping images on task doesn't work in Internet Explorer 10. As soon as I move this one in here, I can see the time is automatically tracking on this task. I don't have to actively start the time tracking. I can't really forget the time tracking because if I really am uh, in a structured workway where I always put the task into the in-progress lane when I really work on it, then I will kick it off automatically. Of course, if I have a lunch break or if I um, end my work day and I have a task that I work in a couple of days on, then I can at any time also stop the time tracking right in the task. But the great thing really is that you stop start the time tracking automatically in here in the progress and also as soon as you jump on the task, as soon as you open the task again at a later stage, you will always see, ah, yeah, sure, this red indicator, I am really working on this on this task at the moment and I'm tracking time on this task at the very moment. Now, if I'm taking my lunch break, I can stop the recording at any time. I can see the total time tracked on my task here. And after the lunch break, I can start the recording again. Now, we already have one action here in the in review lane to actually send out a Slack message, but we can, of course, also add multiple actions. So not only one, we could also add an action here to stop the time tracking of this task. Because of course, if it's in review, we don't want to track time anymore, especially not for the developer, because she or he is leaning back or focusing on the next important task already. So as soon as we take this tracked task with the track time to the in review lane, the time tracking will automatically stop on it. And we can see it in here, one minute 33, um, export this time slope even um, modify it at a later stage if I forgot something in there or if I accidentally didn't turn it off um, when going for lunch break, I can delete the specific time slot or also edit it from the specific times I, I really worked on this task. So great way of tracking time on your projects, especially if you have to bill your clients. 
Now, we didn't really include clients yet. So the next part I want to focus on here is really how to welcome feedback from clients and stakeholders at every iteration. So one thing that's great about MeisterTask is it really simple, it really rules out email a lot. So as soon as I invite my clients into a project board like this, where I have, let's just to go back here, have a couple of tasks in progress um, on in review and two already completed. As soon as I invite somebody to my project here and this person could just be Oliver that we have on our list that we that we invited here to our project before because he doesn't have a single task assigned. So he's probably <laughs> a client or paying client and not really working on this project. <laughs> so that would be one good thing to right away invite the people to the project. And now if the clients are part of your project, they can also access every single task on, on, on your master task project they're invited to. And now they can also interact. So let's say for example, the add videos in inline view to tasks that's that already has been completed um, they can take a look at it they will be notified if something changed on this task if the task has been completed they can comment on the specific task and as you can see here we completed the the other project before but also now oliver commented on this add videos in inline view to task great work and he did this by using the commenting features on our tasks so on each and every task that we have here on MeisterTask, we have a conversations and act activity part of the task. And if you go down there, you will see exactly what happened to a task. So if I switch back to the activity here, I can see that this task was created 21 minutes ago. We moved it to the in progress, to the in review, to the done, back in progress, in review and done because we played a little bit around. And then we eventually completed the task here. Now our client Oliver here said great work. Um, I can see this notification right in, in MeisterTask. I will also get an email if I worked on this task um, where Oliver commented on. And I can then again, for example, like this comment to high five back that this work really worked out, this task really worked out for us. So the comment field here is a great way of actually communicating right on the task other than sending an email about an issue we have to reference first this is really on spot on the of the task directly on the task dialog so there's no confusion or anything uh, which topics are addressed which task is meant here so it's a great way of funneling all the conversation all the questions into the task dialog here so i can include my clients right away in a project like this now, if a client uh, doesn't want to look through each and every task in here, is probably not checking master task each and every day, but still wants to be updated about the different changes, then I have a couple of different ways of doing that. So one would be, of course, to update them um, manually via email or also via Slack, as we did here for the sections. But it's probably not really the right use case to to use this way of, of updating them about the different changes, because then I would have to add a different section for each and every step here. So one thing that we do on, on MeisterTask is actually watching tasks. And watching tasks is one thing that is, happens as soon as you're interacting with the task. Now, if I, for example, and I'm John Demo here, if I create a new task here in the upcoming lane, and the new task would be um, add facial recognition for Meister task, which we won't add. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Um, I added this task. I didn't even assign it to anybody, but I'm already watching this task. And I'm watching this task because I created it. And usually when I create a task, I also want to know the outcome of the task. I would create a task if something is annoying me, if I have a new feature request. I, of course, want to know what's happening to the task eventually. When does it get completed? Are there any questions on the task? Are there different steps, different checklist items that are necessary for, for, the, different, um, for the different tasks or feature requests here? Um, so I will up be updated um, about the different changes on each and every task as soon as I'm watching a task. And this task can even be assigned to somebody completely else. We can still assign it to Susan here um, and also move it to the in progress. Um, I will always get an update if the task 
will be changed by Susan, by Mario, by anybody else. It doesn't matter as long as I'm watching this task. <laughs> and again, we see the section action that the time tracking actually started on this task. So this watching a task allows me to, to follow every single interaction that I had on a task. So also, if I just jump on a task that I didn't even create, as soon as I interact with this task, as soon as I comment, for example, as soon as I add a checklist item, as soon as I upload an attachment, add a due date or anything, I'm automatically added to the watch list. And the only difference is that this is a good watch list compared to many others. So I will be automatically on this list, as you can see here. I'm watching this task as well, the one assigned to Susan, and I'm also watching the same here for Mario. So what automatically happens if a client really interacts with the tasks and really is um, adding new features in the, into the upcoming lane, she or he will automatically get notified anyway about any outcomes from a task. Now the next step would be to manually watch a task. Now if I see a task and I see, ah, this might be really interesting for me, but I don't really want to just add a simple comment only to be on, on, the, on the watching list, I can also go into a task and add myself to the watchers here. Now I can also add my business partner here so that she or he also gets notified or updated about the different changes. Um, a really simple way of, of just getting adding me, myself to the loop of, of a task. Now, if we have clients that really don't interact at all in our, in our project in here, I can also add them to a full project. And to do so, I will go back again up here, this info icon, manage my project, and watch the whole project. This way, I, or even my business client here, Oliver, will get a notification about each and every change that happens in this project. If a new task is created, completed, changed, moved, everything, they will get a notification either in the tool, right here, up like we had it here for the comment, or via email. They can opt out of the emails if they're annoyed by the emails, but if they really um, don't use Meister Task, if they, if they um, don't actively contribute to Meister Task, then they can just use the email loop, the old fashioned email loop, and still be updated about each and every change in here. Now, if they're really, really fans of emails and don't even wanna sign into Meister Task, then we have a different way also for contributing to a project here. So one way would be to um, use our email integration. So when we have um, when we have a different section in here, we can also not only add an action here, a section action, we can also add tasks to the section via email. And this email address here is different for each and every section in this project. So we can just copy this or download a vCard and send an email to this section um, to create a task. So if we have a client um, or a stakeholder that really wants to add new features, new ideas to a specific lane here, like the upcoming lane here for us, then we could provide the email address. Of course, the person won't see the limit up here and won't see the other features and tasks in here, but it would still be a way of allowing external people to contribute to a specific project. So this email address here, um, if you click on it, you can send an email, you can download the V card uh, for this email address. And then as soon as you send an email to this address, um, and I will just quickly do this to simulate this for you as well, so that you get an idea on how this would work here. Let me just simply copy this email address for me here because as soon as you add an email uh, and send an email to a specific project in here, then you can um, automatically transfer the subject line into um, the, the title of the task and the body of the email into actually the description of the task. So we would have a new feature. Let's say we want to call it support for VR as well. Um, and we send out the email to uh, Meister Task. Then this will automatically be inserted after it's parsed by our email parser. And also if you add uh, an attachment to this email, this attachment will also be automatically uploaded 
to master task. So a great way of including external people to your to your projects as well. Now, one thing that uh, we didn't cover yet here is also to utilize different integrations specific for software project management. So, for example, the time tracking, which we already did, but also integrations with Zendesk or GitHub. So, if it comes to integrations that are not only outgoing, like we had here for the uh, Slack message or for really defining an action within MeisterTask, we can always go into the feature settings of the project. The feature settings of the project are actually where we enabled the time tracking before. Now, additional integrations here would be Bitbucket or GitHub. That's, those are two versioning tools for software development, but also Harvest, another time tracking tool, Office 365, Slack again, Zendesk and Freshdesk. So those tools actually allow you, especially Office, Slack and Zendesk, to also add tasks from their tools. So if I'm in a discussion somewhere um, on Slack, let's say as an example, I can create tasks right away from my Slack channel. I can simply add a Slack comment with slash MT and add the task title, the description, even assign it right away from my Slack channel. Now, another use case that I mentioned before would be Zendesk. So Zendesk is a ticketing solution um, that we use internally as well for, for MeisterTask and MindMeister. And Zendesk allows you to install a MeisterTask integration. So if I just simply change my, my screen here again uh, to Zendesk, you will see what I mean here. you should now see our Zendesk interface. So somebody, Oliver in this case again, um, wrote an email that he wants an AR version of MindMeister. Now, usually what would happen in your team is you would take this uh, support, the support agent would actually go to either a developer, a product manager and ask, hey, what's the status? Are we planning to add an AR version of MindMeister? Yes, no, maybe so. so it's usually including a lot of friction. This is at least a feature request, but if it's a bug and if the customer is really angry about it and writes tons of emails that he wants to, that he wants this resolved, um, then it of course adds even more friction because the developer wants to of course fix this issue. The agent wants to help the customer. So it's, it's unnecessary friction in going back and forth via email, Slack or personal communication here. So that's why we added a MySelf integration to it because as soon as I have um, a, a task like this here, a ticket like this here coming in on Zendesk, I can use the Meister task integration here to create a task. I can already um, assign it to somebody here, Oliver again, let's say I can use my section here and with one click, I can create the task right out of Zendesk and um, have this automatically added to my Zendesk as well. Now, the great thing is if somebody changes something on this ticket, so let's say it goes gets moved from the ticket section to the done section, then I will automatically get an update as this Zendesk agent that this ticket, that this task has been completed and I can write back to my client right away via Zendesk. So there's no need of manually checking back that send this ticket agent will automatically get notified about the different changes um, of a task here and will be able to update the end customer right away using Zendesk and not having to, to go back and forth between my master task and Zendesk here. Now, one additional thing here for adding an integration um, is of course the GitHub at Bitbucket, um, Slack and Office 365 that we also saw in here. Those really help you to, again, create new tasks right from their tools. So for example, on GitHub, when you commit in there with a specific commit message, you could automatically complete a task on MeisterTask or also on Office 365. You can connect it and do it the same way like with Slack, where you could either use it as a section action in here, like we had before for the Slack one. We could also send out a notification to Office 365 group, but we could also create a task right away from an Office 365 group. So 
great ways of of facilitating MeisterTask in both ways of creating tasks outside of MeisterTask and looping them into MeisterTask, but also of giving information back out again to the specific tool like Office 365 or Slack and show actually the status like the in review for a task like this here. Now, to actually broaden out MeisterTask in your in your team and, and in your company, we, we used a couple of different features in here to make it a lot easier. So, as I mentioned before, as soon as we have a due date set for somebody, or as, a ta as soon as a task is assigned, each and every team member will see this task on her or his personal dashboard. So we have it right here now again, I'm on my dashboard here, I'm outside of the Agile Software Sprint uh, project here, and you can see on the right side all my tasks. No matter which project they are, they are all listed in this list here. And what I used and already mentioned before is I used the top part here as a today where it actually lists all my tasks that are either due already today or that are getting due today, like this one, the last one that we that we edited before. Now the next part here that really is a great addition for myself at least here is our focus lane. So on each and every task that probably doesn't necessarily have a due date because there's no real end date or, or no real due date for a specific action here, I can mark my task as a focus task. And for example, on this one, the AI holler here, I just went on the task and I pressed the star button up here. And the star actually adds the task to focus. Now focus is something like if you go into your office, if you have five different folders on your desk, you probably take one that you want to work on today. And that's exactly what focus is. You just put it in front of you. Of course, here below our due tasks already. So you should work on them first and then on the focus lane here. Now the remaining tasks here, as I mentioned, are sorted by due date. You can, of course, also sort them by creation date here, but I prefer the due date list of it because then I can really always focus on the top part of my project list and wait until the other tasks come automatically up to eventually finish them. Now, when it comes to onboarding people to MeisterTask, you can create your group of different users on MeisterTask if we for example, go in here into our my account settings, you can see um, the different team members in your team right away. We have um, an overview of all the different groups on the team. And um, as soon as you go in there into the my account settings, you can also define who is actually joining which team, who is, um, who is allowed to, to edit the different things on your project. So a great way of adding a ton of people at the same time. Now, if you're using an email provider like Gmail or Office 365, you can also use them to log in all your users via your email post fix. So you don't need to manually invite anybody to MeisterTask. They can just log in and will be automatically added to your team. Now here on the left side in the project list, I think we currently have about eight projects but it can get, of course, a lot longer. And I think in my personal uh, MeisterTask account, I probably have 50 or even more projects here. So one thing to keep in mind here that usually gets uh, forgotten quite often in here is the ability to create a group as well. So as soon as I um, on here on the dashboard, I can click on here down there on the three circles and add a project group and call it, for example, um, software project, create this, and then I can move the specific sections in here right away. We have the company launch, the master task, and the agile software sprint. So now I can rename this deleted, of course, if I deleted the different projects will be added to the bottom of my list, but I can also hide it if I'm not working on it at, on it at, the, at the moment. So if I work with a lot of projects, um, a good way of, of structuring them in another way. Now, what we did before in our Agile Software Sprint meeting is we added different due dates to our tasks here. And of course, when you are a Scrum Master or Project Leader, you want to get a better bird's eye view. And of course, looking at the different um, task intersections already provides you with some kind of bird's eye view, but we want to even take it further. And for this, 
um, request we for this uh, functionality we actually added a dedicated own part with reports and statistics to MeisterTask. So if you're in this project right now here, you can see this is all in progress, in review. Uh, that's great, but if you click on your avatar here at the top right and click on statistics, then you will get the real data out of your projects, out of your sprints. And as soon as I do that, I can see pre-selected the projects I was in. Um, all the time frame lasts seven days. I can, of course, change it to a specific time frame that I want, also to a specific user, but usually we would want to take a look at the last week here on a weekly basis. Now I can see right away what's going on in my project, how many new tasks are added in there, how many tasks are completed um, over the last seven days here, what's the overall trend here, who are the top active users, which sections have the most tasks added to, and so on and so on. So great uh, performance overview here, but if I want to even go more down in, into detail, I can do so in our reports here, where I can see how many new tasks are added, on which date, um, by and are assigned to, to which members, and probably the most important one for me, the upcoming tasks, where I can see in a calendar view which tasks are actually really due. And we can see again our dragging and dropping images on the Internet Explorer 11, a uh, 10 task here, for due today and the other twos, two tasks that are due next week. So this way we can see in a calendar view what's going on in our team, what's going on in our sprint, like here, but we could also change it to all projects to also see other tasks from other projects. And we can see there are quite some tasks coming up in the next one and two weeks on our next sprints here. So upcoming tasks here in the reports and statistics allow you to see your due date tasks list in, in, in the calendar. You can also switch to a table if you prefer this view, but I find the calendar view quite refreshing here. And it also gives you a better idea when you really plan out your sprint, what's happening on which day, and if you can add new content to, to your project agile sprint board or not. Now, one last thing here in the reports and statistics would be of course the time tracking part if you're using it you can also get detailed statistics about your time tracking. Who tracked what, what were the most tracked tasks here again, basically took the long <laughs> after all then. And also look down on which user is actually using it the most. So if we, for example, only look at Susan in here, we could, sorry, there are two Susans in here, we could look at, at her performance, about her general performance, or again, the performance of all users in here. Um, again, to the performance here, to, to round this up, to round the reports and statistics up, um, quick view of all the different projects and in the reports down here that we had the new tasks and the completed overdue upcoming long running tasks, we can also export the information. So if we are using any additional tool for reporting or tracking, we can export the information, download it as a CSV file and import it into our other tool again to maybe create custom reports for our management team or client or stakeholder to really make sure that we are on track when it comes to the different statuses of state of the different uh, sprints that we are working on. Now also for uh, budget planning, that we um, probably have to do if we are working with an external client. Uh, what we allow here with the time tracking is really to export all the time tracking slips and to use them in your personal budgeting tool in your where you bill your hours to really see which task was the most expensive, for example, uh, and also to see which which user generated the most billable hours, let's say, if you want to do that as well in, in your team. So I will now quickly go back here um, to our dashboard here to also answer a couple of your questions that may may have been, uh, may cam come up uh, during our live workshop here. So please feel free to enter your questions um, in the right part of the workshop solution, and I'm happy to answer them. A question that we had here before a couple of times um, was, of course, um, 
the MySysis 2.0 project. I can click into it, but um, unfortunately there won't be anything MySysis 2.0 related in there. It's just a demo project. I'm very sorry, but we are also really working on MySysis 2.0. So it's not only a joke here, um, more of MySysis 2.0 probably beginning next year. So uh, next questions that we had here, and I will really make sure to answer all of your questions today. Um, even if it takes a little bit longer than an hour here. So um, what I saw here in the chat before, before I will also move to the questions tab here is, are we able to download this after the live session? Yes, uh, we will upload a full recording to YouTube um, today. Uh, it might take one or two hours after our session. Um, I will send out an email to you, including the link afterwards. So you can also share it with your colleagues, show it to your boss or to your, to your employees um, if you're interested in. Another question here from Hassan is how to discuss some tasks only with the internal team so the client can see it. I'm using Slack for Microsoft Teams for this one. I would use other tools for that. Um, we would um, really, if you only want to, if you still want to share the project with your client, um, then they will be able to, to see also the comments. Uh, what we use internally here is Microsoft Teams, um, where we use that and then can also update the project in, in the tab right away. That's a new feature that will come within the next week here, Meister Task for Microsoft Teams as well. So this way you can chat in, in your Microsoft Teams uh, channel with your internal team members and then edit the project right away in the Meister Task tab in Microsoft Teams. This way your client won't see any comments or so in, in the project. Daniel, or Daniel, sorry ask can notification sidebar be sorted by tag so we have this notification sidebar here um, i can see all my notifications i can sort them via a specific tag here so all the notifications are sorted by the timestamp so you will see here five days ago um, and then if i go more down there will be older entries in there so it's always per timestamp here in the notifications now to the questions tab as well. Um, I will go through them in the order they came in right now um, because we will cover them anyway, all of them. So uh, no fear <laughs> of missing out here. So Adelie or Adelie um, ask, how can I print only the tasks in the progress column, for example? So for printing, um, if we are on a project and let's go to this one, I was just shared with me here, um, brand new project, uh, you can either print the whole project here or a simple task. There's unfortunately no way of printing a specific section yet in here. Uh, this will be added here soon as well to the section. It's a um, highly voted feature request already for, for Meister tasks. So this will soon be added to this menu here as well so that you not only can complete and archive or complete the tasks of a section, but also print a, basically a task list of this section. Adderley also asked for presenting to the CEO. He wants to show him all tasks and how, it looks, how long it took to finish them. Um, that's probably one thing that we want to cover again with the statistics view here. Um, the statistics view will really help you to show um, how many tasks were really completed, how did the project really perform, the software sprint one, how much time was really tracked on it, uh, when were the tasks completed, like we saw before in the reports and so on. So I think this is the best view to also show it to your CEO here. That's more of the managing view, the, the project manager view uh, that we like to use in here. Thomas also asked how to discuss some tasks only with the internal team so the client can see it. That's again the same question as we had from the chat. Um, also from Hassan, can we create swim lanes? Um, so swim lanes are currently not a feature of my task. It's also not on our uh, roadmap to add swim lanes at the moment. We want to keep it as simple as possible for now. Also when it comes to the user interface. So swim lanes are nothing, not something that we are working on right now. It's still something on our feature request list. It's not really highly requested to be completely honest. Um, so there won't be a big focus on the swimming lanes yet. Unless Hassan, you have several, several customer friends that <laughs> would vote for this feature as well. 
And Hassan also asked, he would like to create a guest um, account only. So if you're in a project like this one here, the software sprint one, and if you're using MeisterTask Business, then you will have the feature to also activate roles and permissions um, in your project. If you activate those roles and permissions, you can simply invite um, members in different levels here. So for example, here we can see already that I'm the administrator of this project and Susan, Mario and Connor are only read only here. So they are basically guests and I can also add them with guest access here right away. So people um, that are invite with read only um, or commenting um, functionality here won't be counted towards the team members as we saw here, see we, here with the team members and the administrators. So this is basically a guest access only to this project, either in the read only or in the commenting feature. Christoph uh, asks, are there more integrations on the way or planned? Oh, yes. <laughs> so we we have a lot of uh, additional integrations um, on our roadmap. Um, there's not really one that I can talk about right now um, because they're all set to, to specific um, release dates. Also with the, with the partners here on the integration sites, but there's much more to come. Uh, what I can say here, because we had that already before with Microsoft Teams, um, there will be a lot more on the Office 365 and the the Google front when it comes to integration. So a lot more of two-way syncs, um, also especially when it comes to, to dates and emails and so on. So that's all that I can say for now here. Monica asks, can I make a prediction on when the project is likely to be completed based on current progress of burn down charts? So burn down charts are not in our statistics yet. Um, we saw the statistics before um, here with the general performance, the time tracking and the different reports down here. Um, burn down charts are something that are on our list. Um, so we will add them eventually but it's of course also connected to something like a start date and an effort for a project because if i don't have a specific start date set um there's it's almost impossible to to create a gantt or burn down chart so it's something we are very aware of um but we want to make it right uh, we don't want to make it complicated we don't want to um, just guess the start date so First of all, we have to also include a start date and, and effort for tasks to, to make sure that we can present something like that in the future. Emma asked you, can you show how to relate tasks? Like I really need to do task one before doing task two. Of course, Emma. So if you go back here, you can always go back here from statistics at the top right to actually the project you, you um, opened the, the statistics from. So if we go back here right now, um, Let's go to another SAMP project. Let's just create a new one real quick here. Um, so we want to demo the task relations here, create this project here, uh, going in now. Then the first thing that you want to do is for task relations is also activate this feature. Because again, on MeisterTask, we don't think that any team member or, or any project needs all features because we follow the principle of, of keeping it simple here. But if you want to add task relationships, or also time tracking or roles and permissions, you can activate it in the project features here. So you can go to the project features with clicking on the info icon here, clicking on manage, um, and then on the features. So if I go to the features, I simply activate the task relationships and now I can actually connect two tasks. So one example here would be uh, in an open task, we want to create an image for a newsletter and another one would be send out newsletter, just as a simple example here. Now, of course, we have to create the image for the newsletter first. So what we can do here is we can click on this create an image for newsletter and add a relation. In this case, we would probably use the blocks yeah, because this task really blocks the other one. So we can search for the other one here, send out newsletter and selected blocks here. Now, there are four different relation types, as you saw, it's either related to, it's a duplicate of, it blocks or it's blocked by. This one now here um, that we saw here really blocks it, so we will keep it like that. We can see it at any time here at the right sidebar, but what we will also see here is directly on the task, this um, icon here. So this one really shows you, okay, this task is blocked, I have to work on another one first. And if I click on it, I can also see, hey, this is blocked by the create an image for newsletter and I can click on it to go there, finish this one first, 
upload the image um, to this task here maybe and complete it. And as soon as I complete this task here, you can also see that this info, the stop icon here, this one way icon here went away from, from the connected task. Another question here from Thomas is why doesn't he see the different user levels? Um, so the user levels, as I mentioned before, are only part of the MySysTask business plan. The business plan um, was rolled out uh, one or two weeks ago to um, a specific group of, of uh, customers. Um, it's adding additional features like the roles and permissions. So in the business plan, you also have the feature here to add roles and permissions to activate them for a specific project. So that's part of the MySysTask business plan, not the MySysTask pro plan. Christoph asks, are the relations only a shown status or do they really block to do something with the task? So you will get another um, dialogue showing up, popping up if you want to complete the task that's blocked actually, and it will warn you that it's actually blocked by the other task. So I think that's that really covered all questions. Uh, we would have direct exactly hit the one hour mark. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, there will be a recording. You will receive an email from me, including the recording. If you have any other questions before or if you somehow don't receive my email, make sure that you also look into your spam folder. My email address here is oliveratmeisterlabs.com. I also put it uh, to the chat. If you have any additional questions right away or even after the recording, feel free to send me an email here. Um, I think we, we really covered a lot today. So there might be some new questions that might come up when you show, when you watch the recording or maybe even share it with your, with your um, colleagues here or, or, or boss or employees. So feel free to send uh, questions at any time here. As I mentioned, I will upload this um, afterwards for you, make it available on, on YouTube for you and send you out the link. Now, thank you so much for joining today. Um, been a great crowd. Um, we had, I think, a little bit over 90 people joining in today um, from all over the world. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.